Hello everyone! Today I've started another new farm because I'm going to show you how to get some free seeds that you didn't know about. This is something I'd never really considered until recently and it turns out it works pretty well. And no, I'm not just talking about the 15 parsnips the Mayor Lewis leaves in your house overnight. Actually, depending on just how many other seeds we get, we might just sell those parsnips for better seeds. It's debatable whether or not you want to grow parsnips. They do only take 4 days to grow so you get some quick profit and then you can roll that into a bigger better crop. But uh, you might be better off just starting with bigger better seeds initially. Now in case you're wondering what it is we're after, mixed seeds. There's a little bit of everything here. Plant them and see what grows. So we already have four of them, so that means we're going to get four crops for free. All you gotta do to get these is cut the fiber on your farm. It takes no energy to do, it does take a little bit of time, but in your first few days of gameplay you have a lot more time than you have energy anyway. But what these do is give you one of three random spring crops, one of which can be a cauliflower, which is my favorite crop to grow in spring that you can just buy from Pierre. Now what we're going to do for this one is do a side by side comparison. We're going to take these 15 parsnips, plant them, we're going to take the mixed seeds we get, plant them, and we'll see the difference in profit over the course of say a week. Also it's probably worth noting today that my luck is very good luck. So we should in theory get the most mixed seeds. I'm not sure if luck has an effect on how many mixed seeds you find. I would assume it does, but I can't say for sure at this point. I did also try this on the forest farm because there's lots of forageables. Plus it actually has the different kinds of fibers that give you specifically mixed seeds. I thought it would be better, but this farm actually gives you more mixed seeds than any of them that I've tried. Simply because there's more space. The more space there is, the more weeds grow. The more weeds you have, the more mixed seeds you get, and the more money you can make off them. Also on occasion, digging up the worms will give you mixed seeds as well. Even clay is not bad for the first few days, those are worth 20 gold each. So if you find clay, don't throw them away, sell them or hold on to them. So already it's going on 11am, I've been doing more talking and working, but I already have 7 mixed seeds. If you buy those from Pierre, you're probably looking at an average of 50 gold each, so that would cost you 350 gold. And as you can see, we've spent zero, still have our initial 500 to spend. The reason these seeds are so important is because it's so important to make that money in the early stages of the game. The more money you make in the first day, well that just compounds bigger and bigger day after day, starting right here. So the first day is hugely important if you're trying to have a successful run making lots of money throughout your game. If you're going to do this, once you're on the left side of the farm, don't be afraid to pull out your axe or pickaxe to break some stuff. Try to minimize it as much as you can, but if it's going to save you walking a mile around to get to more fiber, just do it. One swing of the axe or pickaxe isn't going to make or break your game. Do remember to keep an eye on that time though, time moves very quickly, especially when you're running around amongst the trees being very distracted. Pierce closes at 5 on the first day, so if you want to buy seeds, you're going to go see him before 5. And yes, there are other things you can do on your first day like chopping wooden stones, gathering resources to sell, but those do take up energy. That's why this one is such an interesting strategy because look, I've used basically no energy. I've chopped a few rocks and sticks, but I'm still going and I've got lots of seeds to show for it. One thing you could consider is spending the first half of your day gathering resources and then spending your evening doing all the fiber because as you can see I'm basically done all the fiber and it's not even 4pm and you could do it a lot quicker if you weren't making a video at the same time. We're going to assume that that was basically all the fiber, I missed a few here and there but they're green and it's a largely green field out there so they're kind of hard to see and get to them all but I do have 12 spare seeds to show for it on the first day. That rolling forward is going to turn into huge amounts of money, probably millions of gold down the road because it just keeps compounding bigger and bigger. Like I said, the earlier you start, the more you get out of it, it's an investment. And interestingly enough, you can actually sell your fiber directly to Robin. So you know what that means? That's also extra instant profit. That's an extra 227 gold on your very first day. Now, say we were to sell everything we've gathered so far. We're up to 773 gold. We've got a total of 27 crops to plant already. Then say we were to take all that money and put it into parsnip seeds. That leaves us with a total of 53 parsnips and 12 mixed seeds to plant on our first day. 65 crops already. I'll be honest with you though, I'm not sure if that's even manageable this early in the game because I've got to plant 65 crops and water them every day for a few days now. Luckily parsnips only take 4 days to go so by the time they're ready to go that's about the time we can start mining and really utilizing our time anyway. And one of the beautiful things about parsnips is you don't really need to water them that badly. It's going to rain 4 days throughout spring so they will grow even if you don't water them. But if you want to do them on time, well yeah you're going to get busy watering. I actually managed to fit them into a neat little row like that now to see if I have the energy left over to water. I probably don't so once I'm done this run out of energy I'm gonna have to go find a forageable or two to get me going. Luckily there's usually a bunch of stuff at the bus stop especially if I have the maximum luck on the first day like I've got. But this does show me that this is a feasible approach to things. I wasn't sure I'd be able to do this but I guess if I have 65 crops it's gonna take me 130 energy to water and I've got 270 so it's gonna take half my energy to water this on any given day. But like I said, by the time I really need that energy for things like mining, the mines will actually be open, so this actually works out pretty nicely. I need to go find a forageable. 
and so far the bus stop is letting me down in a bad way. The garbage cans yielded me a broken CD. We have one dandelion to show for our effort so far, really not a lot of forageables, so we're going to go over and check on the spring onions because those are probably going to be our only source of energy and I've only got a few hours left to do this. We do seem to have lots of these so this will definitely get us through the first day. With only two hours left, we're going to start the final watering process. 1am, I have enough time to spare. I could have gone to do a few more things but we're going to call it a day here because I want to show you what this turns into. And yes, we probably are going to lose some of this to the crows because we can't make a scarecrow yet, but we've got so many it's not really going to be a big factor and hopefully they eat the parsnips and not the more valuable seeds on the left. Today we have our first crow. And it is raining because of course it's the third of spring and it always rains on your first third of spring. Another day, another crow. Only two got eaten so far, but look at all those parsnips and it's only the fifth of spring. That means the mines are open today. So all of this could be energy for the mines or it could be sold to Pierre for instant profit and then rolled into a bigger, better crop. Well, let's go find out what this is worth. Keep in mind, whatever's left over will continue to grow and be worth even more money because they're more valuable seeds. Keep in mind that if you were to actually play through the first four days like this, you would have more money than I have. I just haven't done anything aside from watering the crops. It could be out doing other things, making more money. So there's 1,890 gold plus another 86 for just about 2,000 gold. Guess how much a bigger backpack is you're going to want for the mines? It's 2,000 gold. So you could buy that or you could roll this back into crops. Say you were to spend all that money on potatoes, you would get 39 of them. That's a little bit easier to water and it's going to make you some money. And guess what they're going to be ready in time for? The egg festival, which is where we can get even more valuable seeds. So we're just messily going to plant these somewhere over here. The crows hopefully won't eat them too bad. Tomorrow we should be able to make a scarecrow. But the point is how much money this is going to turn into down the road. For my farming effort, farming still leveled up. Twice. The 11th, the potatoes are ready to go, including the two extra ones we got from our mix seeds at the beginning. So we got plus two potatoes. And then by process of elimination, we're going to be left with five cauliflower. That's five free cauliflower we got on the first day. That's huge extra free money. And look at all the new fiber that's popping up. We could probably go around the field, get a few more extra mix seeds out of the deal as it is. But anyways, let's see what all these potatoes are worth. These potatoes, depending on luck, do actually have the ability to give you extra potatoes as you pick them. So try and pick them on a good luck day if you have any choice in the matter at all. I don't know what the luck is today, but I just want to pick them. And we clearly got some extra because we're up to a total of 52 potatoes. We don't need instant profit because we just need money for the egg festival in two more days. Unfortunately, the cauliflower won't be done in time for that. Those potatoes are worth 4,300 gold. Our first harvest of parsnip was just under 2,000. This is just over 4,000, so over double the value. And they're done. And that of course means that today is the egg festival. It is the 13th. Now, unfortunately, we have no way of selling these before we go to get our next seeds. But these are still going to be profit. We have two gold quality, three regular quality. And wouldn't you know it, with our 4,300 gold, we can buy an even 43 strawberry seeds, which is a nice number to water. And those cauliflower, that can just be a bit of profit to give us some money, seeing as we just spent all of ours. Again, if you were going to do this strategy, you'd be making a lot of money using outside things. You'd be mining by now, fishing, foraging, whatever you want. Those cauliflower are worth 1,049 gold though. Those are seeds we got for free on the first day. And everything else we've done so far crop wise is only given us a little over 4,000 gold. So there's an easy 1,000 gold. Free. Just handed to us. The 21st, so that means our first harvest is ready to go. But I'm not going to throw them in the bin just yet. I'm going to wait till the second harvest is done. Then we're going to do them all together. The 26th, they're done. Not sure how long they've been done for. But once you get your second harvest of strawberries in your first spring, don't bother to water them again because they won't be alive by the end of the spring. And the value of all these... Farming leveled up so we can actually make our crops worth 10% more, so that's convenient. We're looking at a total of about 12,000 gold. 12,000 gold. It's that easy. It wasn't even a giant ridiculous crop or anything. It was a very manageable crop on any given day. You wouldn't even use half your energy to water these. Plus, you'd be harvesting more mix seeds along the way if you wanted to keep up on that. Moral of the story, go get those mix seeds on your first day. It's just free, easy money. You can make all sorts of money from that. Like I said, you think about it like an investment. The earlier you start, the bigger it's going to grow down the road. Another important thing to note with the mixed seeds is they're not limited to spring. You can do them for both summer and fall. Again, they'll just be free seeds. Find them from the fibers on your farm. Hope the worms will potentially find them and they even get better. The summer ones are better than spring and the fall ones are even better than summer. I've run the numbers and by the time you're doing the fall mixed seeds, you're paying less than half price for the seeds where you to buy them from Krobus. Or if you find them, they're absolutely free, of course. But like I demonstrated here, the most important mixed seeds are the ones you can find on your very first day because you don't have a lot of money, you don't have a lot of ways to make more money to get more crops. And of course, crops are what powers the rest of the game. You need to harvest those crops, grow them to make money to do everything else. 
Sorry about the odd audio quality in this one. I decided it would be fun. It would be a good idea to change some settings. Turns out it wasn't, and I should know better by now because every time I change settings, things go wrong. Anyways, I hope you all liked it. Thank you for watching.